Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Let's Process That podcast. I am Emily Christopher. I'm Nick Harnerkamp. Glad you're with us today. Woohoo! We are so excited. If you're watching on YouTube, I feel like the last few episodes um, we've done, we've actually been filming at night, but now the time has changed. And we still, we have like natural sunlight. Wow, such a delight. I don't know about you, Nick, but I am deeply affected by time change. (laughs) Like it really messes me up or it's the best thing ever for me, so. I think it's crazy, um, to be honest with you. Um, I just recently learned why we even do the time change and how it began and it has a good reason, but I, I hate it. But the one bonus feature is we get to see your closet behind you, which we never get to see from the start. Look at all the clothes. This one is new. Really? Um, If you are a YouTube watcher, again, um, I know most of our people are podcast-only audio listeners, but this is a new um, new, uh, hanging rack, and um, the other one is actually out in the hallway, covered in clothes as well. Um, Even though I've given away, um, I went through my closet last week, and I have... Three giant, giant, giant bags of clothes. Um, but yet there's still no room in the three closets I have. So <laughs> still a problem, still a problem. We're working on it. Know thyself. Well, yes, know thyself. By the way, the vision board behind me is old and stale. I'm resigning my job in 12 days and a wake up. And one of the first things I'm going to do is redo my vision board. So those of you who do watch on YouTube, pay attention in a couple of weeks, and you will see an updated, fresh vision board in my background. Ooh, I love it. I love it. That's awesome. And congratulations. Book sales are going well. If you've not grabbed Nick's book, oh my gosh, please, nickhunterkampbooks.com. Com. Okay, I want to make sure. I work with a bunch of dot .orgs, so I'm always like, let me not mess this up. NickHunterCampBooks.com. Um, go grab a book. Everyone that I know that has read it, that has gotten it, has loved it. So if you are, well, I don't say, if you're dealing with forgiveness, no, if you're a human being breathing, yes. you need to read this yeah. book. It's, it is um, a simple read. I really appreciate like something that I could get through, um, in a weekend or whatever. Um, or if there's, if this is something you're really dealing with in the moment, you may want to kind of take it bite by bite and unpack some things, take a chapter, sit with it for a while. But this is, it's a great book to really just go ahead and address some things, get some clarity on some things, get some healing. So thank you, Nick, because this book is already helping so many people. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I've had a couple of people reach out to me and tell me their personal forgiveness stories and how it broke a log jam free in their life. And that's made all the difference. It's been well worth it just from that perspective. So excited, excited about that, excited about our podcast and see where things go this year. Job changes. We'll see what's going to happen. Exciting. I'm so excited. I'm definitely excited to see that vision board. So, um, all righty. So Nick and I, the way... We get our episodes. There's a lot of feedback, as most of you know. If you're a loyal listener, you know that most of it is from people who interact with us, um, whether that's through DMs on Instagram, Facebook, or they've emailed us, they've sent us a text, or whatever. Um, But this particular one is actually a quote that I saw on Instagram, and I screenshotted it, and I sent it to Nick, and we, we both were just like, dang, we got some things to say about this, or we deeply resonate with this quick little quote. And it says this, the people you meet are either reflections of a repeated cycle or guides to a new start. Notice the difference. I'm going to do that one more time. The people you meet are either reflections of a repeated cycle or guides towards a new start. Notice the difference. Nick, what were your first instincts and what were your first feelings when you heard that or read that? So just so people understand how you and I operate, we're out, we're out loud processors. You and I like to talk out loud and figure out what we really think while we're talking out loud. And we're not afraid. And there's no one has suggested a subject to where we're like, we wouldn't touch that. We just don't do that. We enjoy controversial stuff. So when you sent this to me, we had no conversation before this podcast. You said, I said, I love it. Let's do it. 
And then we get on here live and we actually talk it out. And so I, I loved it because you ever hear a song where somebody sings a lyric that perfectly describes something you've been through or the way you feel. And you're like, they get it. They just, so how did they get that and put that song together? And you feel known, you feel normal. And it just, it just captures it perfectly. This quote did that for me. Um, I, this is the first time I've ever talked about this publicly about repetitive cycles in my life, about sages on the side of my road. I've mentioned Sterling before, but never talked about the nuances. How do I know if some, if, if someone's a new sage or if they're just somebody on my path for the moment? And when you sent this to me, I was like, oh gosh, this is going to be delicious. Let's talk about this and let's figure this out because it is rare. It is unique. And so I was really excited about it. I have been caught in painful, repetitive cycles in my life where the people changed, but I didn't. And the cycles just continued. And now in my life, I have sages in my life. They're completely different than the ones I had three years ago. And so, yeah, I've got a lot that I'd like to unpack and process. Tell me what grabbed your attention when you saw this. What was the first thing that that grabbed your attention? What was the first thought you had when you saw it? So when I read it, I immediately started like taking inventory of who's in my life. And I'm like, hmm, wow, okay, where does where is this all applying to? And is there something I need to be more aware of? Is there something I need to process? Mm -hmm. um, is there a relationship, new or old, um, that falls into one of these categories. And I know relationships are very nuanced. I know that they're um, very layered. So not everybody falls into one bucket or the other, but these two spectrums of relationship, I was like, this is interesting. I've not thought about that. So yeah, immediately just started like kind of funneling through, filing through um, my current relationships and even some of my past ones. Um, with the people in my life at all different levels. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's it, it's even interesting. So I'll, I'll share a quick story that's very recent. So um, there was um, some friends and I were hanging out, and there was a girl who I had met a few months ago. And just like our initial interaction, um, I just was like, mm, she rubs me the wrong way. She kind of reminded me of somebody from my past sure. and I was like, mm, and I even told Adrian, I was like, I don't know if I want to hang out with them again, like blah, blah, blah. And it's so funny. We hung out again. Um, and I was like, I love her. She is nothing what I thought. Like first impression was so wrong. Like I feel like I need to repent because I totally mislabeled her, um, and her influence and the dynamic we would have together. Um, but it's interesting because it, it first reminded me of someone else from my past. And right. I almost wrote her off because of that. Mm -hmm. Cause I thought, Ooh, repeated cycle, not for me. Um, so it's just interesting that that just happened. And even, uh, after you and I decided to do this podcast, but it, it was interesting how first impression, I almost wanted to just go ahead and throw her in the bucket of like, no repeated stuff, not interested. Yeah, that's very interesting. Um, this is a little stereotypical, so bear with me, but, um, I have met young women over the years where they've introduced this love of their life and his name is Bob. And then he turns out to be like a dirt bag. And then she meets another guy and he's a dirt bag. And she meets another guy and he's a dirt bag. Finally, boyfriend number seven, she introduces to me. And I'm like, oh, this is Bob. She says, no, his name's Doug. And I said, no, this is Bob number seven. I mean, I've met six of your other guys and they're all the same. And, mm -hmm. and I see the pattern. She doesn't see the pattern. And then, lo and behold, I have the same patterns and somebody points out to me my dysfunction and I'm like, oh my gosh, how am I attracting that? And so what I hope we accomplish in today's podcast is number one, an awareness that sometimes there are repetitive cycles going on in our lives and we're the last people to know. Yeah. Number two, that we can choose to change our environment and therefore change what's attracted to us. And number three, some clues about how to identify if a sage or a guide or a mentor has arrived in our life 
and then how to respond to that. So that would be some of the things that I would hope to. And, you know, some of these stories are painful, but I think that if we can share some stories that benefit other people, that would be uh, worth doing. And so are those worthy goals? Do you think we can do that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I I think these things come up more than we realize because Mm -hmm. we're constant. Most of us are constantly interacting with some person, like at some level, whether it is in business or work or even outside, like when you go into Trader Joe's, like there's people you never know when you can meet someone and create a relationship with them at some level. So I definitely think this is interesting um, and something to be more aware about. So yeah, go ahead and if you're if you're ready to guide us, <laughs> go Here I go. It. So by guiding, you mean tell us a painful story. So here we go. Yes. So in my book, I do mention this story. It was one of the most painful stories of my life. Uh, Our tradition and being on staff of a church was that you are licensed, and then two years later, after serving, if you decide that that's the career that you want for your life, then you can be ordained. It's a special opportunity. There's a special service. It's all about you. And what we used to do is we would send out notification to family and friends. We'd invite them to come to this special service. Uh, we, they would, uh, the senior pastor would buy a special Bible and have it engraved. And then that night, they'd present the Bible to you. Your family and friends would be there. They could give you gifts or words of encouragement in a card. They would, people would pray over you. It'd be a special night for you. And I remember when it came time for me, many times I helped facilitate that for some of the other staff. So I remember that when it came time for me to be ordained, our senior pastor had been out of town for two weeks, like in Russia or something, and got back in on the Monday before the Wednesday and said, hey, you know, we haven't had time to do this. We haven't notified anybody. You know, can you go to the bookstore and buy your own Bible and get it engraved? And it was painful. I was like, dude, I've worked really hard for this moment. And now my family and friends are not going to be here. Nobody is, it's not been advertised. Nobody knows about it. I'm getting my own Bible. It just feels really weird. And then the night came and uh, it, I was disappointed, very disappointed. And I remember leaving there that night and I drove around for about an hour in the dark and I was so mad. I was just so mad, so hurt, so angry. And the the weird thing is, is that, is that, Frank, our senior pastor, loves me like a son. There's no way he would ever dishonor me, that he would Mm -hmm. ever intentionally. He just wouldn't. So sometimes it it has to happen through somebody you would never expect to say, what's going on here? And I remember I was just sort of like talking to God, going, I'm so mad. I'm so tired of this happening. This happens all the time in my life. And and God just says, oh, really? When, When has this happened before? And I said, are you kidding me? And I went back over the last 20 years. And I pointed out five different circumstances where I have been completely dishonored, not appreciated, taken for granted, blah, 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 blah. And when I got done with my hissy fit, Papa just whispered to me and said, what do all those five stories have in common? I'm like, well, they don't. I mean, there's different people, they're different states, they're different times, different circumstances. They don't have anything in common. He says, there's not anything they have in common. I said, well, the only thing they have in common is me. And I got so angry. I said, oh my, don't you dare blame this on me. This is, Don't you blame this on me. This is not my fault. And I remember that night realizing that in some ways I had attracted dishonor. And it didn't even matter. The circumstance, the people, the players didn't matter. Sooner or later, I would invite more dishonor until I dealt with whatever was in me that was attracting that. And that was a painful night for me to realize that I had suffered several circumstances of dishonor that had nothing in common except me. And I've seen people who struggle with rejection, that they feel like they're going to be rejected. They're the odd person out. They never fit. And it doesn't take very long for them to walk in a room and they figure out how to get rejected. Mm -hmm. And it's painful when you realize that there's something inside of you that's calling that out in other people. And so I really appreciated this quote because it said, be careful if you are getting healed from some kind of insecurity, some kind of pain, sure enough, somebody's going to come along and they're going to offer you that same old behavior. And you've got to have the guts to say no more, no more. I'm not putting up with that anymore. 
So that was one of the times when I first realized that I'm carrying around inside of me repetitive cycles that are calling other people to respond in certain ways. It's not their fault. It's my fault. And um, that was really painful. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I couldn't imagine. I would have been very... And your your feelings are validated for sure in that. Thank you. Um, Yeah. And it, it really is catching it early. Like sometimes it feels like something really tragic has to happen or we have to have this huge disappointment to get us to the place where we start actually analyzing what's going on. And um, my hope is that we will take stock of that. We will be like, okay, I need to address this. Um, I even have one of my closest friends. She's back out in the dating world in her mid thirties. She's like, oh my gosh. But I'm so proud of her because the last she dated a couple of guys like you know they're just like a couple of dates and these guys were ding dongs and um she kind of like let them treat her mistreat her or take her for you know take advantage of her all this stuff but this last guy that she went on a date with we had high hopes we thought he was different but unfortunately he was not and earlier she said absolutely not i'm not dealing with this i'm already noticing patterns i'm already mm-hmm. seeing some things Thank you for your time, but no more. And she was like so upset and we're all, we're talking and she's like I just can't believe this is happening again. I really, you know, I thought this guy was better than that. Mm. And I said, "But the win here is that you knew earlier. You didn't go through months and months of this back yeah. and forth and all this time and energy invested. So you noticed the cycle earlier." And I think that's important as well. I mean, sure, none of us want to do a repeated cycle of something painful ever, but it's also very important. And I think it should be celebrated when you're like early on, you see those red flags, you see those things, those patterns of behavior. And you're like, nope, that's not for me. Like, I'm going to go ahead and put a stop to this. I'm going to be gracious about it and poised. But no, this is not what's happening in my life anymore. And that doesn't even mean romantic stuff. That could mean how you're being treated at work. That could be in a friendship, family stuff, like going ahead and noticing that and dealing with it and stopping it saying, okay, nope, nope, we're done here is huge. Yeah. So if you won't respect yourself, how can we expect anybody else to respect you? So I'm going to give you two painful quotes. Okay. Well, one's painful and one's not. The first one is, is it's our job to teach people how to treat us. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that's happened in my life is people use sarcasm to just be funny, but it's degrading. Mm -hmm. And I just stopped laughing. And when they would say something sarcastic, I would just like not get it. Like I would not laugh. I would just like, oh, uh, sorry about that. And I would begin to teach people how to treat me. And then the second thing... (laughs) One of the most painful quotes I've ever heard is, you deserve what you will tolerate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You, you deserve what you'll tolerate and quit tolerating this stuff. And I love that she is getting to a place where having no man and her being at peace is better than having any man. And what it'll do is those jokers will quit calling her and some real life wonderful guys will start noticing and it'll make all the difference. I I firmly believe that we control our environment. What we believe about ourselves, the way we behave, the what we will tolerate, I think it weeds out all the jokers. And um, I'm just at a place in my life, I don't have time to play with people who do not know who I am. And um, I don't say it pridefully, but if you don't know who I am, then I don't have time for that. I, mm-hmm. I, I am looking for people of significance that I can run and do life with and... If you can see who I am, I can see who you are. We're going to run and do that. Mm-hmm. But that's that's hard to break those repetitive cycles. But I firmly believe we're the answer. We don't have to rely on anybody else to make those decisions. We can do it by ourselves. Mm-hmm. And that comes from us knowing our own worth. Uh, also, like, what season of life am I in? Am yep. I in a season of life where I have more margin for people and tolerance for whatever? Um, Because I know depending on your job, that plays a big role on like what you can and cannot tolerate or like where you're at um, emotionally, mentally, like there's so many levels to that. But 
when you know what season you're in and you know where you're at, you can make those boundaries, you can make those calls. And so again, it is us slowing down in life and just pausing, looking around and being like, okay, where am I at? What am I wanting to go do? Because that's what helps make those decisions for us. Um, you know, the people I'm running with are, it, are they helping encourage me? Am I encouraging them? Like what's also my role? I don't want to just be, uh, like taking up space and nagging or, uh, bringing down someone with negativity or whatever. Like I also right. need to say, what am I contributing to everybody in my life? And I think when we know who we are, and again, we know our season of life and what our mission is, that's so much easier for us to do. Um, and it was just recently I was talking to somebody cause they were, I was talking about mission statements and I was actually talking about the book, the path, um, yep, that you it. had us go through years ago. And they were like, you have a mission statement. And I was like, yeah. And like, it's a one liner. Like some people have more complex ones, but mine's super simple. And I was like, everything lines up with that. Like if I can't look back at that mission statement and like line it up, then it's probably got to go or I really need to take a good hard look at it and see if it fits. And if not, mm, okay, moving on. Um, but yeah, when you know yourself, you will do the necessary pruning, what have you. <laughs> so mine's right up there. Whoops. Right up there on the wall. And so my mission statement and, but let me, let me help, let me help the younger, the younger folks out for a second. So Tina and I have two sons, Caleb and Hayden. And if they were dating, they're both married. If they were dating girls and they brought the girls around and they started making disparaging remarks about the girls or comparing them to another girl or something, man, I jacked them up. I mean, jacked them. What the, what do you, don't you bring a girl around here and be comparing her to another girl and tearing her down in front of me? At the same time, they brought girls around that tore them down in front of me. And I want to say to you that I had to be careful because that was their new girl, but their girl was not talking about them the way I wanted a daughter-in-law to talk about them. Mm -hmm. And I would just say there are some guys and girls out there listening right now that you allow people to put you down, to compare you. You have a win, and then they take that win away from you. If they can't celebrate you, they can't have you. Mm -hmm. Oh, my Period. gosh. Absolutely. If they can't celebrate you, do not give yourself to them. Walk away. Mm -mm. Yeah. And honestly, that's any relationship. Like, that should be your friends. Um, I tell people all the time, I'm like, when something good happens to you and somebody goes silent and, or there's crickets in the background, what? Hold on. They're not your people. Like, they are not your people. It doesn't matter if they are blood. Like, if they can't celebrate you, then... Okay, you're showing you're showing really how you feel, um, and there there might be jealousy there, there might be envy, there may be whatever. But I don't care what level of relationship, like I said, blood or not, if they can't celebrate you, there's something wrong there. That because at the very least, the people that we call friends, the people who are supposed to be like our ride or dies, all this stuff, like they should be the first people being like, oh my gosh, yes, go do it. You're incredible. Like, and you know what? We should be too. If you aren't doing that I for agree. your friends, then I agree. Again, everything we're saying, like, yes to them, but also hold the mirror up and take a good look. So, yeah, definitely take stock of who is celebrating you because, woo, that's loud. That is real loud. <laughs> Hey, listen, if they can't celebrate you, they're not going to be there when the bullets start flying. They're not going to be there in your worst moments. And mm, unless they're toxic and they only exactly. like you. <laughs> mm, eating the popcorn while you're going down the uh -huh. flames. Yeah, 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 yeah. They want the tea. They want the gossip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. No. And, and so one of the things that when I saw this quote, I was like, I wonder how many people recognize when repetitive patterns are happening in their life. And I would say that that number is lower than 25%. I think just less than 25% can honestly take uh, an audit of their life and say, wow. Like, for instance, if we were to say, if you're listening to this podcast right now and you're driving, pull over for a second, put out a piece of paper, and let me just ask this question. What repetitive cycles keep happening in your life? 
I know people that say every time I start to get ahead financially, some unexpected bill happens and it wipes me out. Mm. Or every time I think I found the right guy, then I find out he has 14 other wives and that's just, that doesn't work. Or, or every time I think I'm getting a job, my coworker I hate gets promoted ahead of me. Mm-hmm. If you can write down your repetitive cycles happening in your life, I guarantee you there's something you can do about it. There's something you can do to fix that. And I don't think most people know about repetitive cycles. Do you think so? Do you think they're aware? No. No, I don't think at all because, again, we get into life and we a lot of people are in survival mode. Like yeah. most people are in survival mode. Um, you know, from their job, their finances, family, like there's just so much going on. Unfortunately, like our culture has just raised us up that way. So I don't think a lot of people, um, they take those in, like I was saying earlier, those intentional pauses and time to look around and be like, what, what do my relationships look like? What is going on with my mental health? What's going on with my emotional health, my spiritual health? Like whatever that might be. So no, I think a lot of people really, really struggle with repetitive cycles. And then we always, we then that goes into a whole thing of being a victim. So that goes into a victim mentality where like you were saying earlier, how you even went through that with um, the ordination thing. This always happens to me. Um, And so it's, it's a real slippery slope when we when we won't take that. And and again, it's not this dramatic thing where like you need to block out a week of your life. Like if you could just be intentional for an hour a month where you're like, okay, for one hour, I'm just going to take stock of what's been going on the last 30 days. How am I feeling? I don't even know if you need an hour. Some people may not. I don't know. Um, is there any unresolved forgiveness, resentment? What is my relationship with with my partner, with my children, with my job? Um, how am I sleeping? Like all these things to see like where where is the hangups? Where are the cycles? I think people's lives would be drastically different because then you would say, okay, here's the thing that needs to be fixed. Ooh, I'm really dealing with some unforgiveness stuff. I just saw Nick had a book out. I'm going to go get that book. You know what I'm saying? Or like something. Yeah, nice plug. You like that? Yeah, nice um, plug. I did. But no, there's an, or it's like, oh, me and my partner have not been communicating the best in the last three days. You know what? We should probably have a date and maybe sit down with some, maybe, maybe there's a finance thing that's going on or whatever. But if we could get really good at taking an intentional pause and looking at our lives in the different buckets and then going from there, I think those repeated cycles would not cease necessarily, but they we would get much better at recognizing them and hopefully fixing or correcting them. I heard somebody say one time, every night before they go to bed, they write down what they enjoyed about that day because who knows, you might want to have another good day one day. Mm. And I thought that was really brilliant. The other thing, I read a book in the last two years, and I can't remember the book or their author, but he talked about creatives, and inside of the creative person is a scribe and a muse. And what he encourages you to do is engage the scribe in writing down anything you can think about the subject you're interested in. And it could be something like repetitive cycles. And he said, just sit down and journal about that scribe for a little bit. When you're finished, put the pen down, go about your day. The muse then starts working in your subconscious, thinking about all the things you just wrote. And then three days later, you're like, oh, I need to go back to my journal. And suddenly you've got three repetitive cycles you didn't realize were there because you've engaged the muse to go find them once you put the scribe to work. And I think that if all of us would take a little more time of reflection, we would recognize what are the repetitive cycles? They're happening in our lives, and you're you're smart enough to see them. It's just a matter of taking the time and the attention to be able to do that. But I also want to talk about our sages because, yeah. you know, I've had some new people come into my life, and I have some thoughts on that too. Yeah. Oh, gosh. I, yeah, I can definitely say um, when you move locations, and yeah. um, for me, the only... Uh, mentor that followed me into my new season was you. Um, I mean, outside of my parents, um, but I lost all of my mentors and it was really heartbreaking. I had to grieve that, I had to go to therapy for that. Like it is hard when 
um, you know, especially people who were in your life and they were a big part of your life and then they disappear. Um, like that's really, really tough. Um, but I'm so thankful that, um, you know, when our hearts are open and we truly desire connection, I believe, um, God puts those people in our path. Um, and I'm going to shout out one of my, actually, she's a former coworker here in Hampton Roads, but, um, her name's Becca. And she, when I first met her, we only worked together, like, I think two months. And then she, um, got a promotion at another place and moved, but, um, she's just been so stable and like a mother figure. And even the other day, just like giving me this like bump of encouragement. And, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was like in a place where I was like, I just need to talk to somebody, um, here because it's, it's easy for me to call home and talk to my parents or even talk to you, but I needed someone here that could feel that. And like a 30 minute phone call was the most refreshing thing. Like I hung up the phone and I was like, oh my gosh, I felt so heard. I felt mm-hmm. like I had new vision. I feel like I had some things that just, I don't know, everything came in alignment. And again, I had to open myself up to that. And I also had to learn how to be vulnerable with somebody because usually those mentors, sages, whatever you want to call them in our lives that come in, um, you really have to open up yourself to a certain level of vulnerability for them to really be able to speak to the depth. Um, and of course, there's people who might be more surface level guides and just like wise people that you're happen to be around and proxy and you get some of their wisdom. But if they're really speaking into your life, oh my gosh, like you have to open yourself back up. And that's sometimes really scary with a new human being um, to to do that. And I know you've experienced that recently as well. So I'm curious your experience. So I've always like... Growing up, I had a pastor who was a, like a spiritual father, who was a mentor. And, you know, I, I always had people that spoke into my life. Always. Um, I didn't know any other way. And so, you know, three, four years ago, Frank Harvey, Sonny Mazar, Mike Jones. These are some of the people that spoke into my life. They knew me. They knew mm-hmm. my motivations. They knew my heart. They knew my character. All those kind of things. Then fast forward to 2020, that was a crazy, incredible season, uh, just difficult in so many ways. And then I stepped down from the pastorate and then began to pursue another career. And in the process, not that I've thrown any of those people away, but in that process, I'm no longer in the mix of that genre. I'm in a different genre. And the Lord has been faithful, and there are some new people in my life. And Sterling Gardner, who we just interviewed recently, Mm -hmm. Alex Comfort, John Curtis. These are three sages in my life right now. And let me tell you how they became sages in my life. Are you ready? Yes. So, like, I would meet one of them, and as we, like, say, like, my favorite color is gray or yellow, and my favorite animal is rhinoceros, and my favorite word is collaborative. Okay, that's, so that's a synergy. Those those are things that like are my core. Mm-hmm. So I would meet one of these guys, and they'd be sitting there, and as they're talking to me, they're like, "Yeah, yeah, blah blah blah, rhino, blah blah blah, gray, blah blah blah, collaborative, blah blah blah, yellow, blah blah blah, rhino." And I'm like, "Do you understand? You're speaking my language. I mean, everything you're saying." are things that matter to me and you don't even know me. And they're like, mm. I, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not, I'm just being me. And and suddenly it's like they're radioactive. Like I, I see more than what's happening in the conversation. And then they do this. Nick, can I tell you something that's really interesting and really fascinating about you? Something that's brilliant that I don't notice about other people. And they begin to affirm me, celebrate me, point out a brilliance in me. That they don't know. They they're just on face, you know, face value. Mm-hmm. And so when somebody speaks my language, they use words I use, they talk about things I care about, and I'm like, how are you talking about this? I this is something that's really important to me. Or they pa- point point out brilliance that they just identified and recognized. And three, they treat me to a vision of what they see my life could be and they get excited and they want to be a part of it. 
And they're like, do you understand you have like six figure ideas? Like your ideas are six figure. Like we should do something together. How can we do something? And and suddenly this is not just a cool person I just met. Mm -hmm. They're a sage on my road. Now, I don't have to agree with them theologically. I don't have to agree with them philosophically. I don't have to vote the way they vote. I don't care about any of that. They have my language. They see who I am. And they want to partner with me and treat me to a vision of myself I can't get somewhere else. Now, three people in the last two years, that's what's happened. And every time I say, you're my sage. And every time they back up, I'm like, what? I'm just, I'm just Alex. I'm just, you know, Sterling. What are you talking about? And I'm like... I don't need you to be anything you're not already. But I want you to know, mm-hmm. when you speak, you're too young for this. There used to be a commercial that says, when E.F. Hutton speaks, people listen. You know, and everything would go silent when E.F. Hutton would talk. When they speak, it's more than just another human voice. It's a sage on my road. I'll bet you there are people listening to us right now who have sages, but they didn't recognize what they were listening to. And those people, their voice is five times more important than somebody else in your life. Now, respond to any of that, push back, argue, disagree, I don't care. But what do you think about what I just said? Yeah, no, I love that. And and again, when you know yourself, like you mm-hmm. can identify those things that you're like, gosh, when I hear the word collaborative, my heart just mm-hmm. sings. Like, sings. um, yes. And so when somebody else says that, you automatically gravitate and say, ooh, same. Um, But again, when people don't know like themselves enough or where they want to go enough, um, they're not going to catch those things when the, when Mm. some, when someone's speaking. And so this really does go back to like, you got to know yourself. You got to know the mission that you're on, the vision that you carry, your, that statement that resonates with you um, so that you can be aware And again, I don't think a lot of us are walking around looking for it and it's everywhere. Like I, and I have to intentionally, um, pray that every morning I'm like, let my eyes be open. Let my ears be open. My heart, my, my emotions, like let everything be open because it's so easy for me to get distracted. It's so easy for me to be attached to a task list for me to miss so many good things that are on the path for me whether it is a sage or some wisdom or something else even more extravagant and beyond my belief um, that could happen. So it really, it really is opening ourselves up because I know you, when you have a meeting with somebody or you meet someone like you are such a great intentional listener. So you're already looking for those things. And I think that's what separates that from what some people may naturally do. They're just not paying attention. So let me ask you a question. And I'm putting you on the spot right now because I don't know the answer to this question, but I trust I trust you. I, you'll get this. Okay. Tell me a time or how long ago, that's a better question, how long ago was it that you sat down with somebody fairly new to your life and they told you something brilliant about you that caught your imagination, that, 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 that stole your heart, that, that, that said, wow, I want to believe that. I really want to believe that. Can you, how long ago was that? Mm, Two weeks ago. Okay. This is happening all the time and we're not paying attention. That's all I'm trying to say is that I knew it. I knew you would say, oh, that was so-and-so at lunch Mm -hmm. uh, last Monday. I knew you would figure that out. It's happening around us. But you know what we do? We pipe in our mother's voice. We pipe in, come on. People who yeah. have known us our whole life who are like, you should do better on this. You shouldn't do that. You should not your mom, of course. We talk no. about your mom all the time. But she texted me this week, by the way. <laughs> um, sure. <laughs> she, for some reason, she thinks I can help you, but I just can't. No, um, I'm, I'm go- too far gone. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what I'm saying is, is that we listen to these voices that reaffirm who we used to be or who we never were. Mm-hmm. And then we have these new voices that are like brilliant and they're like, do you know who you are? Do you know what you have? And I'm just saying that there's somebody listening today saying, I wish somebody would do that for me. And I promise you in the last month, somebody already has, and you missed it. Yeah. And I'm saying, again, if as what you said, if you would pray in the morning and say, please open my ears mm-hmm. and my eyes, that the next time somebody points out a brilliance in me, 
I literally have someone in my life, whenever I compliment them, they look away, Mm -hmm. they start talking over me, and literally will leave the room if I don't shut up. No, I'm serious. They don't know what to do with positive affirmation. And I'm wondering how many people out there listening to us, that's their repetitive cycle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And gosh, it that it really is sad to watch people reject that. Um, and sometimes it is um, like a very like a place inside of you that won't receive it and that needs healing. But then it's also um, there's some people who do like the false humility thing. And I yeah. know I used to be like, oh no, no, not me. And then finally I was like, okay, like this is who you were created to be. And or you've done the really freaking hard work to get here. So say, thank you. That's so kind. I received that. Mm. Um, And it's it's interesting, too. um, Even outside of myself, um, recently in the last couple of months, um, Adrian and I have had people really affirm our relationship, which has been really beautiful. Um, Like we uh, were in Nashville visiting some friends and um, we went to... Uh, visit my friend Zach and his husband. Um, they just had a, they just adopted a baby and his husband, Caleb, well, they're both very affirming, like just the kindest, most loving people. You've told me about them. Yes. But Caleb, um, when I met Caleb, I hadn't, this was a couple of years ago before I met Adrian and Caleb was so sweet. He was like, how are you single? I don't understand. Like I just, you know, I was going through a divorce, all this stuff. And he was like, no, like, I don't get it. I don't get it. And I was like, well, I'm not really at a place where, you know, that's what I'm looking for. I'm trying to heal. And then maybe that door will open. And then sure enough, a few months later is when I uh, met Adrian. So, um, but it was so awesome sitting there. Um, Caleb and Adrian had never met, never talked, didn't even know the other ones existed until we went on that trip, really. And then um, other than like, I was like, yeah, this is my friend Zach's husband that we're going to go see. Cool, cool. And when we're there, Caleb just begins to affirm. He's like, oh my gosh, you two, like, I just see peace when I look at you. I just see this beautiful, like, collaboration, unity that you guys have. Like, this is awesome. I'm so happy. He just, like, was calling out these things that, of course, we know and we celebrate together. Like, yes, we are so thankful for what we have because we really do feel like it's so unique and special. But for somebody else to like, again, pop up on our road, like someone where we're not going to see all the time. Um, but to like look in and then affirm those things was just so beautiful. Like we're all tearing up as Caleb's talking and it was just like the coolest thing. And, you know, sure. We could have been like, Oh no, that's not us. No, no, no. But we were like, wow, thank you for saying those things and affirming us. That was the most beautiful moment. And you know, the other flip of that is we shouldn't be afraid to also be that person for other people. Um, and I know you and I talk about that all the time, like calling out the gold. That's kind of our yeah. phrase for it. But we have no idea how empowering it is for us to do that for other people and to really say those specific things um, that can bring so much hope or get them to a new place or like grab a hold of a new vision or their mission or whatever it is. So, um, yeah, I just think it's beautiful and I hope that there's a lot more of that. And I hope that's something that I put as like my daily goal, not just, you know, I hope I do this a few times a month. No, like I hope every day I can be that for somebody. That's really cool because if I think about it a little bit, the whole sowing and reaping kind of thing, if we were trained that today I'm going to find I'm going to give five compliments today, Mm -hmm. sincere compliments. Mm -hmm. It might be a waiter I've never met before, or it may be a friend that I really admire, but I've never said anything. If we would add five compliments and train our minds to look for brilliance or Mm -hmm. gold, and I wonder if it opened up our ears. Mm -hmm. I wonder if suddenly we'd be able to hear when people are affirming us Mm -hmm. and giving us clues to our own brilliance and what that would look like. And my sincere hope from this conversation is that people would pause for a second and say, are there repetitive cycles in my life that continually tear me down that I can break by my own behavior, the people I let in my life and the things I let them say and do. 
And then I'm wondering if we could pay attention and see if there's a person in our life that just has some wisdom for us. They have a direction for our life. They can open a door for us. They can give us advice that we need to take. Mm -hmm. And I think that, again, that there, there's an old, I think it's Confucius that said this, but that when the, when the student is ready, the mentor uh, or, uh, appears. So whenever the student gets ready, then suddenly the mentor is there. Mm -hmm. And I think that if we, we control that, and if we control breaking those repetitive cycles, but we also control, hey, I'm a willing student, and I'm looking for who has words that are life to me. Man, this, this podcast could change somebody's life. Yeah. If they're willing to um, take ownership and responsibility for the people in their world. Yeah. That's how, that's how seriously I take this conversation. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is one of my favorite things to talk about. So I'm glad that um, we got to dedicate a podcast to it. Um, Cause it really, and it, I mean, if you know us and you listen, that's probably, this is always kind of a theme woven in at some point. But to really look at it today, I think it's been really awesome. And I hope it does. I hope Good. people really walk away um, with their eyes more open, their hearts more open. And um, also they're encouraged to pull out the gold in more people. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Well, Nick, thank you again. Always a joy, always a delight to sit and chat and go over all these things and we started with the sun up and the sun is now down if you're watching um, <laughs> my our YouTube channel. Um, so we thank you guys for being with us on another episode. Um, as you hear, there's some awesome music going on right now in the background and that is by Caleb Honorkamp. Um, all the photography you see on our socials is done by Allison Frost from Before the Foundation's Photography. And we could not do what we do without our producer, Adrian Vosh. Um, so we thank you guys. We hope you have a fantastic week. Give us feedback. Let us know. Did this resonate with you? Do you have a story to share? Because um, I would love to start reading some stuff on our episodes here. So give us some feedback, friends. Awesome. All right. Everybody have a fantastic week. And we'll see you next time. Love you guys. See you soon.